Good morning, everyone. Good morning, Tal. Good morning. Uh, good. Good evening. <laughs> good evening too. Let's give it just a few minutes for people to join. Well, I guess we can start. I have a feeling, <coughs> excuse me, <coughs> excuse me. I have a feeling um, that uh, we won't have many participants. It is a beginning of Thanksgiving in the United States. Uh, quite a few people take more holiday. <laughs> uh, our co-chair, uh, John, is on holiday. Uh, and also, I'm confused by uh, the timing of the <laughs> of the event. I, I thought it would be scheduled an hour for now, so I'm a little bit underprepared. Uh, but it seems like this is the correct time, so uh, I think we should hold the meeting. And uh, uh, if we run out of uh, <laughs> items for the schedule, then we can end early. But at least make sure that um, everybody who is joining that we at least uh, uh, touch base. So. Yeah, right. I agree. I find the timing of that meeting uh, a little bit disturbing. The fact that uh, uh, it has not moved with times they like exactly. saying is, uh, <laughs> yeah. is, a dis is a disgrace, I will say. <laughs> I, I think I, my imagination is that what happened is that somebody somewhere tried to fix it for the uh, daylight saving time and it somehow stayed that way. Uh, but as I think this. I think this is incorrect. Uh, I, I was not involved with setting up the meeting, so I will uh, have to talk to John or somewhere else afterwards, but this is probably what people see in the calendar, so we should stick to it to avoid confusion. Um, but yes, it probably means that people who think, <laughs> who have a different time in their schedule will uh, will not join this one. So, um, so yeah, we, we won't reach any uh, big decisions today <laughs> if, if the meeting is not a, a normal meeting, but I, I think there's definitely things for us to talk about. So uh, let's see, maybe I can share my screen. Um, did that work? Yeah. Okay, good. Uh, so really, I, I thought the uh, the only important item to have for today would be impressions from the O&E Summit. Um, we had our workshop 
And uh, additionally, in the summit, there are a few announcements from the Linux Foundation of, of new projects or ongoing projects. And I thought to, uh, we could pick each other's brain a bit about what this means for, for Netio. Uh, so first, um, I guess I'll add our own uh, Nafia workshop. Um, so who, okay, I won't, I won't do a show, show of hands, but I know some of you have been there. Um, would somebody want to start maybe give, give an impression, Wim, do, do you have a kind of summary that you would give for other people who are not there? Yeah, I, I had one agenda item that I suggested, but maybe we have to discuss it in the sick release meeting. Uh, which is the lab setup? And uh, I'm, I'm proposing a few enhancements, but maybe we have to oh. postpone that to the to the release meeting. Uh, with the way that we are doing the lab at the moment, I think it's not representative to the real world. And I'm proposing a few changes that we do, but uh, we can also discuss it in the sick release meeting. Uh, um. Yeah, I, I because we probably that, don't have the forum uh, here to to discuss all of that. Yeah, I, I I think you're right. Um, we don't have the main people. Uh, also, I'm not really sure if the SIG release meeting will happen this week, right? Um, no, no, there is. It's only two weeks, right? So it's next week, I think. Oh, okay, right. You're correct. Yeah, um, yeah. yeah you're probably right. Um, but maybe before we jump to to that item, yeah, so you yeah. want to yeah. talk about Maybe you were more involved in, in the setup of, of the workshop. Do you want to give your own version of impressions about it? <laughs> <laughs> so I was happy <laughs> to what we achieved. Yeah. Um, yeah, so I think I, there is a lot of stuff that is going on under the hood. And I'm wondering, I, I think the demo was good to grasp uh, or to get a sense to the audience on what it means and what happens and stuff like that. I'm not sure whether all the people fully get it, right? because of course, if you do the demo, you see the outside, you don't see the inside. Um, so that's one of the, yeah, for me, it's uh, given that I was involved quite deeply, uh, it was, uh, it's pretty obvious for me what's happening, but I'm wondering whether the people in the audience uh, understood all the things that were happening. Uh, second, okay, if you look, I, is the questions particularly on Nephew or in general of the Linux Foundation? Uh, let's do them one of the, at a time. Let's start yeah. with the Nephew workshop. Uh, so for me, the fact that we did the practical thing helped a lot in my view, or at least that's the feedback that I got from multiple people, is that uh, they got a sense of what is happening. I'm wondering to what level of detail, eh? but uh, I think for me, that was a very positive thing that we did. Uh, to get a bit of a, I, to the details of what's going on and have people experience with it and see what it means uh, or what it would mean. Uh, of course, there is a, a few new concepts that are in there. And yeah, the question is, yeah, depending on the level of understanding and, and the feedback people have, I think I'm probably the, 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 the worst person to ask given I was so deeply involved. <laughs> Yeah. But that would be my question to the people. It's like, did uh, was it clear to what I, whether we have to do more on it? Is there things that you don't like? I, those type of uh, questions I have personally. Uh, all good questions. So, would somebody else like to jump in and answer them? Well, well I can I can try to jump in. I'm a uh, I'm not the. Uh, the, uh, the, the kind of audience who, uh, who would have no clue of what's going on underneath. However, uh, so I've been running the present, I've been running the, the, the demo as part of the workshop. I was not uh, directly in, as involved as Vim was or as John was or as you were uh, into, the, into the preparation. So what, what the demo gave, which was very good, is a very good perception of a, of a possible uh, user journey uh, from uh, from uh, a, a deployment and a planning and a planning perspective, and the fact that there was a demo was uh, uh, was something that was showing uh, 
that is something that is uh, that is concrete that is rooted into uh, into code, not something that is uh, that is just uh, PowerPoint presentations. The part that did not go through the demo, but it's I don't think you can you can get through it to the demo is the important part in my opinion of Nephew, which is the uh, how to express the relationships and the dependencies between the workload and the infrastructure through Invent. This part, uh, if you if you uh, were not uh, part of the of the discussion pr uh, prior to that, were were not were not appearing in the demo. No. And that's that, and that's not that's not a critic of the demo. Okay, I don't think it's the no, 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 no. concept that you can you can get through through the demo. So the demo is very good for giving uh, uh, the uh, user journey experience, uh, but it doesn't show everything that is important in nature, in my, in my opinion. Yeah. Yeah, I, I also I think I agree with that. <laughs> uh, anybody else? Well, I just wanted to see whether if somebody wants to try out the demo here, right? So do you have a procedure we can share in the Slack so that we can uh, try it out offline? We, there we is should. Yeah, yeah, yeah we have to, we, I think we have to do a bit more work maybe because I'm actually repurposing the demo based on the discussion that I wanted to have. So I'm building uh, my own framework. Uh, so with that, you can, it's basically, it would be an Ansible playbook uh, that you basically run. Uh, because I think what you see right now to set it up, there's a few scripts. If you go into the one summit directory, there is a, I, if you're into the details, you can, uh, it would be, uh, you could find your way in, but there's no clear description on what to do uh, uh, first and then second and so on and so forth. So we have to do a bit of work to make it easier consumable, but I believe there is some people who wants to get that done uh, sooner than later. Because right now what you see is that there's a bunch of script, there is an in uh, there is, one is okay, you have to create a VM which at the moment is a uh, is, uh, Google Cloud, but at the end of the day, this works with any virtual machine that you uh, set up. We used Ubuntu. You could probably change the scripts to work with uh, RHEL or Fedora or some other Linux distributions. And then there is a few scripts that uh, sets up, uh, so pre-installs kind, kept, uh, kubectl, uh, kubectl, uh, so a bunch of uh, files. Then you create the kind clusters and then you install ISO. With that also the CNIs and Multus gets installed. And then there's a script that installs all the repos with the manifest and stuff like that. So I think at the moment, if you are not, you have to find your way into it. There is no clear description that you should follow as far as I can see, or I haven't found it. Uh, that would say, okay, do this first and this and then and that, and you'll have a running setup. I don't, I haven't found that myself. I found a few scripts that I am uh, using or repurposing uh, to basically use a single Ansible playbook uh, to do it. But of course, yeah, all of this was done in a hurry. So it was just to get the demo up and running. So I understand that uh, we want to make it uh, more consumable and as such that yeah you basically have to push a button if you will to get uh, your own environment up and running on in an yeah in an in something that uh, yeah. makes sense i think we are trying to standardize on kind uh, also that is probably questionable but yeah seems to do the job uh, yeah. So that's okay, uh, right? So what I was looking for is right. So for us, I am as I told you earlier. So I am new to Kubernetes and all all the stuff, yeah. right? So it might be easier for me to uh, see the evolution so that I can understand as well. As long as if there's some instruction on the readme kind of thing, what are the steps to proceed with that in that inside the repo? It's good enough. Otherwise, I have to bug you a couple of you a couple of times. So other than that, I think I'm good. So yeah. I, I would say the readme is very good. Uh, it's very comprehensive. Uh, I think most of it is, uh, is the work of John. It really explains <clears throat> the entire purpose and design <laughs> of, of the demo. So, so I think that's great. The issue is more about getting it to work, <laughs> as Wim said. Yeah. Uh, Wim, I also have a bunch of ideas. I know so many people worked very hard on this demo in that last week, right up to the day before the demo itself. Yeah. 
Um, and um, we got it to work, of course, but there's, I, I, Wim, I think you're correct that we can do a lot to make it easier. Uh, we used a method, playbooks that already existed that uh, Sandeep created to, to set up the kind clusters. In my opinion, they're too complicated. <laughs> uh, Victor and I uh, worked on a different approach, again, using kind clusters. And I know kind might not be the best, but it's also very easy to just demonstrate uh, what Nephew is doing. But we also used kind in a very complicated way, right? Because we were doing some interesting things in the demo because we want to showcase uh, uh, Multis, additional networks using Multis with uh, network attachment definitions, but having a data plane that actually works cross clusters. So if we have three clusters, we want to show that they can have data plane NICs that, that connect. The assumption is that, of course, in the, in the real world, uh, these would be geographically separate clusters and there will be some sort of connectivity between them, right? The, if it's the mid hall or, 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 the, or the back hall, right? For, uh, in, in uh, 5G terms, right? Um, but, but yeah, let, let's not get bogged into the details, I guess, today. I think that, that should be for the yeah. release. But yeah, we, it's not only about uh, getting this demo running, but remember future demos too. This will be a way for us to deliver uh, and showcase our progress to the community. So we need to get it right. <laughs> Yeah, plus um, I think I, but I, at the end of the day, it should become our test environment, right? That we use in order to validate the software exactly. and stuff like that. So yeah. we should uh, use it for various purposes. Yeah, show and tell as well as uh, consumption as well as uh, development. Yeah, that is correct. Um, yeah, we can, we can get into the details too. I actually did not use Ubuntu for, for what I was working on because specifically I wanted to use Podman, which I know is available on Ubuntu too and create kind clusters without relying on root. And um, in yeah. my view, that would showcase better the, the, uh, the actual issues rather than turning it into a hack just to make it work. But anyway, <laughs> we, we should really talk about that in, in SIG release. Uh, yeah, yeah. Th there's a lot we can do to make it easier. And I don't think it works right now. Uh, I think if you download it, uh, the readme does tell you how to use the demo, but it does assume that certain steps were already done in terms of setting up GitHub uh, repos and and things like that. So I don't think it's quite ready for the community just to have a nice green download button and and run. I don't think it yeah. it would do but that I, right now. But I, I don't know if it, yeah it, it's still um, <clears throat> it should be uh, it should be it should be nice to ha to uh, even if we had um, sort of uh, um, you know, the green button, you know, just, you, 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 I don't know if we really need to go that far. I mean, <laughs> maybe one or two of us might be willing to be kind of guinea pigs for, you know, for, uh, yeah. for, to, you know, for, to, for to, um, you know, see if we can, you know, take, take it and install it. Or maybe, uh, I wouldn't mind, uh, you know, doing that. Uh, you know, get some, get some, get some resources here and see if we can. Even work with what you have, or you know, if you just want to, I know, I like, I know what it's like with the demo uh, demos myself. You know, especially if you have a very short time, you end up and you get the demo working, but you have all this stuff scattered around the floor. You know, and you, you you want to clean all that stuff up, but you know, um, you know, we, I, I wouldn't mind uh, having a go at, at it when you, when you think that it's you know, if, uh, you know, when you think that it's a level that maybe we can we can uh, we can. Um, that wouldn't scare us too much, you know, because really, uh, we uh, we know I, we know it's not going to be, you know, absolutely sp sparkly perfect <laughs> no, that, yet. Yeah, that would be great. Of course, we we really hope everybody here would would try to do it, uh, go through it themselves. And actually, I do think it's possible to have a very complete self-contained virtual machine, including setting up a, you know, without even requiring a GitHub account or anything like that, because you can run some sort of internal Git server as well in the VM, uh, and. Yeah, we can do all of that, but but really, these are all this. This is all what SIG release is for, right? So I think those uh, the technical discussions probably uh, would be better done there. Uh, Anna, I see your ha your hand is up. Do you want to say something? Yeah. Um. So you guys yeah. know I've been building cluster on my on VM running on my laptop, and um, with Stephen help, I got the SMF running on my Intel Mac VM. So I would like to take it further and get the UPF up and, you know, basically do most of the demo 
on it. I'm still haven't thought through what the Git part needs because I'm not so sure my laptop can. Well, the VM has a GitHub server already, so I can probably do that too. So my goal is to get the complete demo on a local cluster so that we don't have to, you know, for people who are cheap like me and who don't have access to the cloud, right? Without paying a lot of money or enough money that it make a concern, make it a concern. I'd like to be able to get it done on a local cluster. Does that uh, make sense? It should be, yeah, it should be possible, I think, um, right? So we should yeah. be able to do that. Uh... Yeah. yeah, so I, I, I start looking at the the all the different YAMLs and SH uh, shell script uh, over the last couple of days. So I'll post my progress, if that makes sense. Mm -hmm. um, I'm trying to quickly find the uh, a link to share with everybody. Oh, I think I found it. Um, let me just share it in the chat as well. Uh, so everybody can see what we're talking about. Um, I'll put it on the agenda. Right, is that the right link? I think so, the final. Uh... Yeah, this is the, 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 the outline what to do to, to uh, that's what Joel yeah, uh, wrote, right? Out. If you If you look, there is a directory, the scripts. So if you go one deeper, there is the, Scripts directory. Oh, here it's in the in the Git. Yeah, so you see, so there's a scripts. So there you see a repo. So here you uh, see more details of what they did uh, and so on. But it's you have a different scripts. Uh, so you have an installs dot sh. You have a repo dot sh. Right. Right. And well, then you have this participant. So you see, there's a few directories. I, they're all there, I think, but you have to find uh, your way through it. Right. And, and I simpler. think not all the scripts are actually used because, as I said, there's a combination. A few of us were working on it at the same time, and then we picked the one that worked. <laughs> so uh, th there's a few, there's a bit of work that uh, Victor did that has not been, I think, finally used. It might be yes. in a different branch too. I don't remember exactly. Um, yeah, there, there was a big rush at the end to get it to work, but yeah, yeah. I, my impression, it, it was impressive. I, I, think, I think everybody who participated in the workshop got a sense that um, there is something here that, that works. Uh, we were very careful to say that this is, this is not even a version of 0 0.01. This is, a, this is really a draft of, a rough draft of, of how we think what the functionality should be. And, um, and I think everybody understood that correctly. Uh, and, and what was important to me was beyond the, the demo itself or you know, the workshop where people participated in the demo, those that managed to run it, uh, was the discussion that followed really because, uh, and this is one of the reasons I believe in a, a code first approach, <laughs> really showing people something that works beyond just uh, showing a few slides or presentations about how it should be. Because I thought the, the conversation was very much hands-on and related to, uh, well, okay, here are the features that we did see. What about the features that we didn't see? <laughs> and what would Nephew have them in scope or not in scope? So, or, so I, I thought there were some very good discussions. Um, yeah, um, if I may jump in. Sure, so please. I went on Thursday, the following day, Thursday, to the Sonic workshop. And I spent most of my day there. And there were quite a few people who wanted to, especially the hedgehog company yeah. people, are looking Sonic. at using Nephew approach on uh, their configuration of Sonic. Yes, I know uh, Mike uh, quite well. Um, yeah. I talked to him again uh, yesterday or Monday, Monday okay. in Palo Alto. And yeah, we agreed that the, the Nephew config as data approach would be very useful for what they are trying to do with Sonic. So they're looking to, you know, integrate, get involved somehow. Yeah. So there's, my point is there's cross adoption outside Nephew even. Yeah. Right. Um... 
for those who don't know what Sonic is, uh, it is uh, a Linux Foundation uh, um, effort to create a whole bunch of very common uh, network functions uh, in open source with the idea that all of them or most of them can be uh, hardware accelerated with uh, different vendors being able to create their own hardware acceleration for this component. Um, I think I got it right. <laughs> Am I correct, Khan? I yeah, think Sonic I, is trying to create a NOS, right? As a, an open source NOS. Yeah. Which is uh, an driven, yeah. Yeah, right. driven by, it's a bit, a bit of competition to Dent, uh, if you will. Yep. I, the, <laughs> Dent was in the, in, in the workshop and there was some interaction. So there's two different initiatives uh, for similar goal, I think. I, I think what's interesting is mm. It's not only a NOS, but it's a composable NOS, so to speak. Yeah. Yeah. And, and a bunch of, I think one team from Cisco did a hackathon demo where they built a cloud virtual router using that the is, different- That is me. Uh -huh. yeah. oh, this is Dell. We won that one. Oh, we did Adele, the cloud yeah. router park, yeah. Sorry. Hello, I, I what, that's, that's okay. No, no, that's okay. No, but Dent and uh, Sonic are a little different. Dent is targeting the retail segment yeah, uh, it's using it's switch there. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, and Sonic is kind of mainly at the data center right now. Uh, so on percolating to enterprises, uh, large scale enterprises and retailers. That's where Sonic is right now. In. Uh, Dent just started with the retail environment. Uh, the main difference between them is the the hardware adaptation layer they use switch yes. dev in dent and here in sonic we use sci yeah so my 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 thinking is you know if you use the nephew uh approach with configures data to the set of sonic uh demons network functions so uh, and bill basically nodes on the fly, networking virtual router, virtual switches on the no, fly. I, have, I spoke to those team as well. That is not that easy right now. I know, it's I know. Uh, no, you know, Not about the container because Sonic has lost of host networking related stuff. Yes. Right? So a lot of application is not containerized. A lot of things are still yep. at the host level and a lot of dependency on the Linux kernel itself, right? Yeah, just moving yeah. to one Debian version to another Debian version uh, was a nightmare. And then it took more than six months for the team to move forward from just a kernel version. Even though it's all containerized, it's modularized, but moving the kernel version, because they, have, they depend on a lot of Netlink related services and host services. Uh, so it was a big challenge just, just for that itself, right? So there's a big uplift even before Nepio. Right. There is a big uplift in, needed in Sonic in order to make it uh, kernel independent in the sense that uh, the distro independent uh, one. Yeah. Is it really quickly? I don't want to derail Nephew discussion, but really quickly. Understood that is a network OS, right? So it has a lot yeah. of Linux kernel of dependency interlocking and all that. Do you yeah. see a way to compose those and pick and choose based on, say, the hardware accelerator and the OS, um, the not the OS, but the Linux version you're using. Is there a way of using, of composing that on the fly? Is what I was trying to get at. Yeah, no, no definitely you can do that. Right? So okay. that is the end goal. If you look at if you look at Dash, there is another program mm -hmm. uh, that is basically a disaggregated API for Sonic uh, host. Mm -hmm. So basically, that is a that is a small miniature Sonic running in because those are running in the DPU, right? Trying to offload mm -hmm. the Kubernetes yeah. and infrastructure into the DPU card, right? So those are the first use cases uh, OPA is trying offloading the Kubernetes network infrastructure to the to the DPU. So Sonic is a base OS for that as well, right? But they have many uh, they have removed a lot of containers for that and then many uh, many. Basically, they made Sonic a little bit uh, lightweight. Sonic with a different set of pipeline, which is needed for the host itself. Okay. Yeah, I'll, I'll follow up with you, but 
Thank you. Yeah, yeah just ping me. Hit me in the chat. I, I can explain you what's going on. Thank you. Um, so yeah, and the consumption model. If if we sorry to to stick on Sonic okay, a bit, okay. the consumption okay. model to to go onto Sonic. It's not like you have a young representation of that thing, right? So you have various containers that you have to interwork independently. No, well, there isn't young. So there's two different pieces, right? One is infrastructure. Right now, it's all a single blob kind of binary, right? Even though it's all container based, you cannot uh, do one container at a time kind of thing. It's a single uh, installer. Uh, but the config itself, all are Yang model. In all the configs in Sonic, it's all Yang model based. We support Sonic Yang as well as open config Yangs uh, to support Sonic. That is for configuration. And there is a support for third party containers to run as well as part of Sonic. So those things are there, but the core container itself, it's not that easy. They are all intertwined right now. So that dependency needs to be removed first. Yeah. But is it a full stack management? So like my understanding is that if you do the chassis or if you do the fans and stuff like that, is that also in the same Yang tree or is it completely separate? No, it's all in the same Yang tree. Okay. Yeah, I might. So, okay. There is two things, right? So one is the community version and one is the Dell version, what we have. Uh, so we have uh, industry standard CLA and other stuff. So Sonic is a little bit behind. So we are contributing back to the open source, but it is a little bit behind. Uh, some things might not be there, what I say. I have to go back to community version and check what, what level of uh, supports are there. But I do know that the management framework is already contributed. Uh, so it does have all the YANs uh, related to the community support. And we are making it mandatory to any there is a separate Yang work group also. So they're making it mandatory. Any new application or new infrastructure coming in, they have to come with the Yang. Otherwise, the PRs would be rejected. Okay. And is it both NetConf as well as gRPC or? Uh, no, just the ResConf and uh, gRPC uh, and CLI. Those are the three things. There is no NetConf. So but no NetConf. NetConf yeah. are, no. Uh, no NetConf, but NetConf has been added uh, as part of the Goldstone project in TIP. Telecom Infra Project as a optical OOPT subgroup. So they took Sonic, they added NetConf to it. Mm -hmm. So that is not find, found its ways back to Sonic uh, main repo, but there is a NetConf support available right. uh, in another another open source project. Um, do you happen to have a link to the uh, a working link to the Sonic repo or group? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, if you could share in the chat because they see the, the links, the official links are all wrong. They don't uh, go. No, anywhere. no, no. Everything, the Sonic recently moved from OCP community to Linux Foundation. So there is a new Sonic net. Okay. So it was previously used to be in Microsoft Azure. Let's now it's all moved to its own foundation and own thing. So let me give you a link. Um, it's at this. So if you search okay, for Sonic iPhone, Sonic iPhone net in GitHub, uh, that is where the Sonic is. Yeah, does this look correct? Yeah, this must be it. It's Linux Foundation. Okay, I'll, I'll fix the link here. Also share it here so people can see. Um, yep. All right. The last um, one, yeah. Oops. So, to me, actually, a very interesting uh, announcement was Silva. Uh, Silva. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, sorry. Have any of you been in, in part of the uh, the Silva uh, uh, meetings in uh, in ONE? Yeah, I was there. Uh, I was there. Oh, I, I see Char so, Charles. You have your hand up for a while. Would Would you like to to jump in and say something? Please. Yeah. Oh, so, sorry. It was uh, back to when we were talking about the uh, the demo being a great way to get the word out to the community a bit about what Nephio is and give them a broad sense of, of how it works. And uh, at the time, I was just thinking that that would be another really good way to get the word out for those of you who are familiar with FOSDEM. It's a, a really big uh, open source conference that's put on by the open source community. 
uh, it's happening again this year in, in Brussels in February after not having happened for a couple of years. And um, it'd be great to have a talk submitted about Sonnet, I think, for that community. So I, I put a, a link um, to the, the net, uh, network uh, room um, CFP. And I'm one of the people that runs that room. Um, and uh, to, to Sonic or to Charles, to Sonic or to Nephew? Uh, I, I was thinking of Nephew. Uh, yeah, you know, no, no, no. Sonic would be great too, uh, but I was thinking specifically about Nephew. Yeah, I, I, yeah, I think you, you said, I think Sonic. I think it's oh, sorry. Yeah, yeah, that's why I was going. Okay. But why so does Brussels, it have to be? Sorry, go ahead. Brussels would be easy for me because I'm living there. I live in, <laughs> in Belgium. So. Yeah, I was going to say, why does it have to be Brussels in February? It's really cold. Well, <laughs> that's when the, the university uh, gives us their, their campus. Okay, so yeah, it's, yeah. It, it's for, if you've never been to it, it's, it's a very different conference than you're probably used to. Everything's free. Um, it's run by the community. So it's, there's some good and bad that comes with that, but it's really a, a you know a passionate group of open source you know developers primarily all getting together and talking about a bunch of different topics. But uh, there's a lot of good networking talks there, and I think Nephio and you know Sonic would, would certainly be a good thing too. But for this audience, I, I'm more primarily interested in Nephio. But um, but yeah, uh, check it out and. Um, uh, it's a neat event if you've never attended. Now, should yeah. we do that, run that through the TSC uh, tall, probably, right? Uh, if, or can we do it in the, independently? Um, <laughs> I think so. I'm, I'm not sure if the TSC needs to. Of course, anybody, anyone here can can uh, submit a talk to FOSTEM and sure. present something. I don't know if, if we want to take it maybe a higher level, possibly a keynote or similar, we, we probably would need a more help, but I, I would generally encourage, and I do this too, any conference or work that, that, uh, that is relevant, uh, submit talks. <laughs> I think yeah. anybody here is, is who has been participating so far, you know, we have the official positions of chairs and TSC, but everybody here is a contributor and involved in the project and can say something about it. Uh, none of us has a, other than the TSC, none of us has a special, uh, uh, you know, say for, for, the, for the role of the project. But I think we can all talk about it and talk about our impressions of it and what we think personally it could mean to, to uh, the industry. Uh, so I personally would, would encourage everybody who wants to give an FEO related presentation to do so. Um, but yeah, if we want but, to do but something it, but more- it's a personal, it, But it, it's a personal thing, right? So it's uh, right. at the end of the day, it's a personal, it's not, you cannot talk on behalf of NEFIO, you, it's, it's your yeah, personal right. view, yeah. Yeah, right. That's the way a lot of these conferences run too, right? And at FOSDEM, you really don't want to, I mean, people don't represent their company there. They, they're they really just, you know, a, a passionate member of the open source community. So exactly. people different can have different of impressions of, of Nephio and different things that they want to use it for. So uh, I right. think it's, it's fair for anyone to submit a talk. Right, ONE, ONE is of course a Linux Foundation um, summit but uh, FOSTEM is exactly that, it's, it's, it's more open. But this is what, what I hope uh, for Nephio and other Linux Foundation pro projects to be like too. It's, they're community projects. Uh, Linux Foundation is hosting it <laughs> and helping to curate it. But at the end of the day, it's all of us who really own, own the project. I, I really think we all have a say as to where Nephio will go. Uh, you know, if there are conflicts and we're, we're not all aligned, then we, we always move to the TSC to vote on and make decisions. But at the end of the day, we're all contributors here. And uh, we're, we're all authorized to say uh, some things, <laughs> some definitive things about NEPIA. Um, uh, uh, it looks like but, the deadline is November 25th. So. Yeah, that's, yeah, that's, that's an that's unfortunate cool. thing that it was a bit late in getting the conference out, uh, the announcements out. I'm almost positive it will be extended. So if you can't get your talk in by the 25th, which basically for many of you means today, uh, get it in as soon as you can. I'm, I'm gonna work with my other uh, colleagues who are running the dev room. I, I think we need to extend that. It, so it, it Charles, took much I, longer for all the announcements to come out than uh, was for initially expected. 
I, I would suggest that, uh, Charles, if you may uh, add this as an agenda item to the next TSC meeting and possibly raise it there. So maybe we could do a more formal uh, Linux Foundation presentation there about, uh, about Nefio, if it's relevant. OK. Uh, does, that, does that make sense to you? Yeah, sure. OK. Well, well thanks. Well, it seems like we've already talked about a few of the projects, right? Uh, quite a bit about Sonic Dent. You know, Dent has been around for a bit. And as people here have said, it's, it's, it sounds like it might be similar to Sonic, but I actually think it's very different. Uh, I understand yeah. Dent to be, uh, it's, it's not a network OS in the same sense that Sonic is. It is an actual OS, right? It is a, a, a Linux distribution really that's highly tailored for running switches. And of course you, compose, you can compose them together to create kind of a, a network OS but it seems something much more low level to me. Um, uh, no, it does. It is a network OS. Right? Style. The only, no, no, it is a network OS, but uh, it has all the functionality of a network OS. The difference is, uh, as I said, right, the hardware layer, hardware abstraction layer, if you think of a laptop, how your NIC driver comes in. So Dent is kind of looking at, right, if you, if you are able to install a Linux distribution directly on a network switch, it should directly work on it, right, just with the Linux tools and the driver. So they are going with that approach of switch dev. On top of that, they do have their CLI and apps uh, of a full network OS itself, right? So you'll be running FRR. Yeah, so you have to extend the Linux like kernel to be able to support uh, the capabilities, whereas in the other one, use a side to go to the yeah. hardware. Yeah. I yeah see. And then yeah, switch dev course. is not, the main thing is switch dev is not supported by Broadcom, which is the... Yeah. The big Majority, challenge. So, yeah. <laughs> yeah, that is a bigger problem. So only Menelox, Marvel are the primary contributor there. So that is one of one other problem we have with Dent, right? So there are a lot of platforms available with Broadcom, ISIC, and we we won't be able to support that. Mm -hmm. uh, I understand. So, the, well, the you, question you know, kind even of begs. If there's some, uh, sorry, go ahead. All right. Uh, the question kind of beg, uh, begging is. Um, performance if, if you're going through an application layer, API like Psy versus going directly to the hardware like Dent, if I understand that correctly. Doesn't matter. So these are all at least the control plane. So everything is running in the ASIC, oh, okay. if you look at yeah, it, right? So these are all just a control plane APIs to configure it. How you configure it doesn't matter. There's no much performance impact on all those things. Yeah. Uh, the, the thing with Dent is it's very lightweight so that you can put it in a very smaller retailer box. Unlike Sonic, Sonic needs a minimum of four gig of RAM and because each and everything is a container, it takes so much space. Yep. Uh, so that those are the differences between Dent and Sonic. Cool. Thank okay, you. well, I, it does sound like there's overlap between Sonic and Dent and goals, uh, different approaches, but I, I think for, I can't say exactly what it means for Nephew, but I think, well, one thing we can help deliver those network functions on Kubernetes, <laughs> right? That's what we do yeah. at Nephew. But yeah. also I think those projects could be useful to give us feedback on requirements. Uh, yeah. Of course we but have- so the, way, the way I see it, uh, Tal, is the following, right? I mean, I, that's also back to the discussion I wanted to have on the, the release uh, stuff like that uh, uh, thing, but I, they play in the networking space, right? So we have to interconnect our clusters somehow, right? So that's where they play as far as I can see. So for us, we need to consume them. So I think the way that we consume them, ideally would be through a Yang-based data model, right? In which case, uh, if we have a driver that is generic for Yang, we can support either a networking device or a UPF or an SMF or an AMF. Uh, so that's how I look at it. So as a yeah, result- of course, it's different CRDs that you that you consume, but the way I look at these is like these are I, we need to consume them somehow. That's why I was asking the question because a couple of I, half a year or, or a year ago, the support of Yang and Sonic was scattered. Uh, so that's why it was my question uh, all over the place. So that it means is, that you could do, yeah, it uh, is maybe still that way. No, no, I, it it's still scattered. Oh, yeah. So that that means that I. What you see typically in networking uh, space and also in other network function space is that you have a single Yang file that, that you can do anything with it. Either re represents the state, configuration. So, and if we have that, then for me, it's not, I, the difference is, okay, how you consume them and what you do with them. 
but not uh, it's another network function. It's in this case, it's a, a physical right. one. It's not a container, but it's. I I always believe that if we do nephew right, we shouldn't care. But this yeah, one will be. No, the ENO part, sorry, Tal, right? So I was thinking that it's kind of a enhancement to ENO, right? So the, we did the ENO demo a couple of uh, months back, right? The external network fabric, yeah. so they came and gave but, a but, demo. So, uh, yeah, ENO does, a, yeah, ENO does a very specific way of interacting with OVS and stuff like that. That's why I believe we have to rethink that a little bit to make it more composable. Because... Uh, you have, I imagine you have to have building blocks scattered around that, that seamlessly work together. That's actually what we did in the demo. And if you really decompose it right, then it shouldn't matter whether we have Sonic or Dent under the hood. It, it really doesn't yeah. matter. And it should be any device that we, uh, that, that uh, is, has a certain set of capabilities, we should be able to talk to. So it's not any different than a Nokia UPF or an Ericsson UPF. It's basically, it would be Sonic or Dent or any other Cisco switch or a Cisco router or Nokia router or a Juniper. It shouldn't matter. Yeah, As, I agree. Yeah, that's what we need to, to try to get towards. If we do that, then of course, we will probably, we will do a reference implementation of X, right? And then the specifics of each and every implementation would be done by the specific vendors probably. Uh, but if we do it that way, then I think we have a very scalable framework on which people can build and do their particular plugins to consume a specific function. Yeah, I'll, I'll just two very quick comments. If if you remember, uh, first I agree entirely with everything you said. Uh, I I proposed in my uh, early component list that one of the things Nefio really needs to focus on is a component to handle NetConf. And I have a POC that I will showcase in a future meeting, I think, where it becomes more relevant. But I did mention, you know, my idea of what I've been calling adjacent PNFs, <laughs> that yeah. they're not part of the workload itself. So they're not containerized Kubernetes uh, workloads, but they are critical for the use case itself and should be configured Correct. as part of it. So it exactly could be these components, right? Um, I will say uh, my other comment is at the end of the day, our use case is defined by SIG number one. Uh, which until now, you know, the, the idea was to have a very limited use case, uh, 5G use case, which is not end-to-end, -end, <laughs> very specific component. So whether we will want to use and consume, as you said, Sonic or Dent components, I think that should be up to SIG number one to decide. You know, the, SIG number one is also decide, for example, that we should use free 5GC, right, or and not Magma or something else. So I think this discussion probably would be more interesting there to have in terms of what the Sonic and Dent mean for Nefio use case, <laughs> right? Uh, and and but if, I think if we yeah, want from the moment we go to transport, uh, from the moment we go to transport, right? We yeah. will probably involve that. And then I think we have to pick a reference implementation that we use. And then the question is, what is it consumable in Nefio context to achieve a particular goal? And we should pick one as we did for the free 5GC. Right. And, yeah. and you know, uh, we, we have, of course, Nokia, Ericsson, and others involved uh, in FEO, and these vendors are making their own proprietary components uh, that in some way compete, <laughs> compete with us. Uh, well, I mean, we have a NOS that is not open source, but it's open consumable without a license or any guardrail. So okay. it's 100% Yang. Right? So anyone can download sure. it and use it without anyone of Nokia knowing it. No, so, so this is, you know, it, it might be a bigger topic in itself to think about how Nefio and NOSs can, can uh, interact. And yeah. with that in mind, it could be proprietary ones as well as these open source ones. Yeah. And we, pro we yeah. of course, want to support both. <laughs> but uh, yeah, anyway, it, it could be a very interesting topic, I think, for SIG architecture. Mm -hmm. uh, I yeah. want to move along to this one more announcement. Okay. Before we move along, us. Uh, one thing, uh, no, 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 just post this link, whatever the component diagram you showed, just post the link in the chat so that I can take a look at it later. Thank you. Oh, a, a link to what? Sorry, I didn't get. Uh, the link to whatever you showed just now, the diagram, the component diagram, your, your notes. Oh, uh, okay. Of course. Yeah, this is, uh, this is a little bit older, but it's um, here. I'll post it. This is uh, in our, if you, if you want to look for it, it is 
in the, the Google Drive for uh, SIG automation, which all of you should have access to. I think it's public. And okay. that's where we share our, our documents. Under proposals, we have actually a few different uh, component landscapes <laughs> that people have proposed. This will be an ongoing discussion. And actually, now that we finished the workshop, I think this should be our priority for the agenda moving on and to, because we have different ideas from different people about what components we should actually develop, which are the important ones. Um, so that's probably something we want to finish before the end of the year to really be aligned and clear on what we are actually developing in FBO, right? This is part of why I'm saying that the, the workshop was a very rough draft. It was us rushing to just show something um, it's not as if the whole community came together and agreed that this is uh, how we should uh, build Nefio. So I think it's important for all of us, now that the workshop is done and we have an example of how it could work, uh, to get feedback from everybody and to together decide what we're actually going to do for a 1.0 release of Nefio, right? So, so anyway, yeah, under this uh, folder, you'll see a whole bunch of uh, those proposals. That document I shared was my own. <laughs> But uh, we still haven't really done the kind of cross feedback and, uh, and in-depth talking about this because we were too busy with the workshop. Uh, but we'll get back to it. Uh, before, so I, I did thanks, quickly Scott. go ahead on. Yeah. Sorry, before you, I mean, getting off Sonic, but I don't want us to skip over Silva if we can spend a couple yeah, minutes. Yeah, exactly what I wanted to get to. Thank you. <laughs> so I, I wanted to, to get back to um, this announcement of a new project called Silva which actually I think might be most interesting uh, for us at Nefio. So, uh, Anna, did you say you went to the Silva uh, presentation? Yeah, I went, I went to the TAL. Oh, please, uh, so so, I, I would love to hear your impression, please. Yeah, please. Uh, no. So basically they are trying to put together uh, a Telco cloud platform with all the open source uh, tools, whatever they have. So they have picked and choose a lot of open source tools starting from uh, collecting to telemetry to VNF influencer. So they are missing a component for the NF, uh, the CNF and VNF installation. So that's where Nefio can play a part. If you look at their architecture diagram, uh, so they have put Metal LB, they have put uh, Fleet, uh, GitOps. They want to have an entire CACD based pipeline uh, to deploy the Telco Cloud as well. So they have a component for telemetry. They have a component for deployment for bare metal. They have a component for deployment for, uh, uh, I forgot, I have a couple of, uh, one slide which talks about all the components they're using. Basically, they're trying to integrate all the open source to provide a, a Telco cloud. Yeah, I see there's a lot of information, right? The, the link, um, yeah, I think everybody could probably follow this a bit. That, that sounds about right. I mean, I, I think there's a immediate connection <laughs> in my mind between Nefio and Silva where uh, Silva could be the, the actual use case that we use, the network functions. So right now we're cobbling together for the workshop, you know, uh, free 5GC, we're talking about Magma, uh, open 5GS. <laughs> there are a few of these very small uh, and uh, I would say quirky open source projects. And I mean, no disrespect to the people who develop them, uh, but uh, we, we, we push them together and create kind of a use case, but it's, it's very obviously a very kind of small demo-like use case. Silva could give us a use case, an open source use case that's much more comprehensive and, uh, and serious. So I have not spent a lot of time uh, reading these, but I think we should all take a close look at, at Silva. Yeah. From Silva's side, it would be very interesting to think, well, uh, could Nefio be the way to actually deliver all these network functions? They um, actually, so they actually mentioned us. The, yeah, 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 that's they, what they actually mentioned it. They do. Yeah. If you look at the last link I just posted in the chat as a screenshot, oh. uh, as a diagram, you could share that. Yes, just a second, I have. The only thing that we should that that we probably have to do is if we do the infrastructure right now we have done uh, if we would do clusters right through Nefio if we would be able to set up a cluster through Nefio we would solve a huge uh, part of what they want to do I think no I, at least that's how I look at it maybe I'm wrong I, 
Do you mind I, I, I mean, that's our that's our goal in FEO, right? To deliver network functions, yeah. including the infrastructure, right, and scope. Yeah. So, um, so absolutely, yeah. yeah. FEO could be the way to install Silva, <laughs> right? Yeah, it yeah, seems yeah. like a very natural fit fit to me. Um, and also, to an extent, maybe Sonic and Dent, right? Their components as well. You know, parts of the layers at least. So. Um, so, yeah, so I, I, Adam, yeah, do okay. you mind elaborating what you mean by delivering cluster? I, I think I know what you mean, but I'd like to hear it. See, today what we did is, uh, I, so there's a few things that we relied upon and we didn't uh, manage them, right? So as such, a cluster, mm -hmm. a kind cluster was created by the scripts and yep. we mapped a cluster into our CRD, but we didn't do the intent and manage that cluster. Yes creation and life cycle uh, management of that uh, we were not uh, doing during our demo, right? So what I'm saying is that if we would uh, do that, uh, then it would already, I take a bunch of the infra away uh, from it. And then of course, if we would do transport, as you said, uh, Tal, you can do the, the networking side as well, right? So then you have right. the majority of the infra covered as far as I can see. So, so they have a first listen chance, so we have to see what they come up with. Hello, everybody. Uh, Sundar here. I just have an uh, open question, if you don't mind. From Silva's point of view or any of these stacks' point of view, right? Uh, they could, for example, potentially use something like cross plane, which also gives you a kind of vendor independence. You can deploy uh, infrastructure, configuration, etc. So, how would you position Nephew? with respect to cross-plane for somebody like Silva? Well, I, my, my answer would be, um, th these are two separate issues. Cross-plane, cluster API, those things are things that Nefio would consume. I don't think Nefio, I see Nefio as filling gaps. I don't think Nefio has to create new components for projects that are already being worked on. So if you're working on cluster API, you know, Nefio would be able to consume that because it's, use it to install clusters. Or if you want to use cross-plane instead, you could use that. If you want to use Red Hat ACM with ZTP, you could use that. I think from Nefio's perspective, these are things that it would connect to, right? If I go back to my, again, my personal view of things, my diagram, <clears throat> I put the all those cluster installation things here as a orange component, which means they already exist. This is not in scope for, for Nefio. However, Nefio will have to interact with them. Right, so we'll probably right. have to create multiple demos of, of these, multiple integrations, sorry, of these sort with these components. So, um, yeah, I don't think our role in FEO is to reinvent crossplane, but we could probably give feedback to the crossplane project that could really help it, right, in terms of delivering um, a telco workload. So, so our yeah, community I, engagement at large is very important, I think. Absolutely. I agree we should not reinvent anything. But if you look at the three pillars of Nefio, about cluster configuration, Kubernetes level workload configuration, and uh, NF configuration directly, the first two seem to be under the scope of crossplane, right? Crossplane can deploy things to Kubernetes operators, so it can configure your Kubernetes plane as well, right? Right. Right. Okay. I, 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 that's exactly my point. I'll, I'll, I'll try to state it in a clear way. I think that uh, okay. These are these are components that Nefio needs. Mm -hmm. So crossplane would be a requirement for us because that's the first step of actually setting up the cluster. Um, sure. But I don't think Nefio should reinvent things that 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 it does, right? So, mm. um, but but it is critical for us, right? Ne Nefio, you know, all those three pillars and all the components that we do at the at the end of the day, most of these components are already there. Mm -hmm. It's not like right now we cannot deliver 5G on Kubernetes. I think many people on the, on the call today have done this in their own mm -hmm. companies as demos, as POCs. At Red Hat, we've done multiple keynotes that we actually showcase this. So mm -hmm. it's possible to do it. The problem that the narrative is so scattered, it's cobbled together, combinations of open source and proprietary components done by companies, at least in Red Hat's case, it's all open source. But it's it's the narrative is a mess to say the least. We can do it, but we have to cobble together all these resources that we have. So mm -hmm. my view is that Nefio does two things. First of all, it fills in a few gaps, but it also yeah. clarifies the narrative. 
that we all understand how we deliver CNFs. We all understand the idea that there's a management cluster that sets up the workload clusters. We all understand how that works. And we have examples in FEO of these operators that actually do those integrations. So, so from my perspective, it could be that if crossplane doesn't work as well as we want it to work, we work upstream with crossplane to fix those aspects that we, we feel are important from, from our uh, perspective. Good, okay. Um, uh, yeah. one, uh, yes, go ahead. One thing I would like to say is that crossplane can be used as an implementation to realize some of the operators that will be uh, consuming and controlling the, uh, the intent level CRDs. That 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 we are uh, that we are defining. What it does not do is to define what is the uh, what what is the uh, the a CRD for a given type of resource, which I think uh, Nephew intends to do for infrastructure and for uh, and for lifecycle management. So, Crossman can definitely be used to implement some of those, but there is still a need for uh, and and a, and, a, and a place for. Uh, for nephew uh, to uh, uh, to uh, to define what was intense uh, what 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 was intense are right and and crossplane is not the only solution right there there are competing ones within the CNCF there's the cluster API that's been worked on for a long time um, and and at that's the it. end of the day I, I don't think it's nephew jobs to choose which one we might pick one for a reference demo but. We, we understand that functionally it could always be replaced by by anything else, including proprietary systems for, for installation. Absolutely. So that's why that's why the interfaces defining the right interfaces in the form of those CRs and CRDs is important, and not not so much how the uh, how those CRDs are realized underneath. Exactly. That that's always been my perspective. That I I, I keep emphasizing, including in in, in uh, the workshop last week that. At the end of the day, I, I know a lot of uh, people in the community think that for us, defining the CRDs is a very important task and will be the most complicated one. To an extent that's true, we'll, we'll definitely spend a lot of time in the community here talking about those CRDs once we start developing them. But I also think it's not so important because at the end of the day, can, they can be replaced by other CRDs by vendors. At the end of the day, what's important is the principle itself that we are dealing with CRDs, <laughs> that we are defining clusters with CRDs and what their properties are exactly Yes, they will change by vendor by vendor, use case by use case. But at the end of the day, it's pretty easy. It, it'll be properties of, of Kubernetes, KRM, custom resources. And, well, and, I, and that I, is the key to get everything. I think it. agreeing what we put in an intent and what does not belong to an intent will be very important to agree in this community. Right, right. I, I, I think my point of view is that both, both positions are important. But anyway, we, we are out of time for today. I, I do think uh, it was a very interesting discussion and I'm, I'm glad we have a meeting anyway. And uh, next week, I hope uh, everybody will be back from their vacations and we can move on to uh, uh, important items items and future agenda discussing the actual components. Um, really quickly. Um, sure. Since we don't have a lot of time left before the end of the year and you had mentioned that starting in January, we should have a very clear roadmap, if you will, of what we need to do next. Uh, can we work the agenda more before the me next week meeting and going forward more actively so that, and also do we need to better document what we have in terms of architecture, not just like the hands-on step-by-step, -step, but more like document what we've been discussing uh, so that newer members, people who are looking at Nephew can get a better feel of what we're trying to do. Or, did, or uh, do those <laughs> yeah, exist I, I, and I just don't know where they are? Yeah, well, yeah, it's it's really the document, um, you know, the uh, agenda and notes. We uh -huh. should probably be, do, be doing a better job at uh, filling in the notes. <laughs> uh, our hope is that this would be the way to really see progress here in this document. And of course, we're also recording all these meetings too, so people can go to them. But I agree with you. We we we're uh, we're moving. I think now after the workshop to the next phase where we have to be a more grown up project. Uh, <laughs> the wiki, for example, is very poorly. There's almost nothing on the wiki, and I think yeah. on you mentioned. You know, we we need to create wiki pages that actually better define what the project is, what the progress is, what the roadmap is. I think now is the time to finally really create those. 
okay. uh, now that we had that opening shot of uh, showing some sort of progress. So I, I agree with you entirely. Uh, we need to we need to be grown ups, responsible adults right now, and manage the project uh, 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 more clearly and 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 with a clearer document than this. Uh, it, it might be hard doing it over the next few days, just because it's uh, again a, a holiday here in America, and some of the key people uh, might not be around. But but let's definitely try to do this early next week, and uh, organize a, a very clear agenda for this next meeting, and also. I really want to figure out what time this meeting is, <laughs> because I think the, the current calendar event is not what we discussed. So I, uh, well, we'll we'll have to figure it out before before the next meeting next week, yeah. uh, for sure. But but yeah, we, we are out of time. We went be beyond time, and I always want to make sure that we finish on time. So thank you, everybody. Uh, this has been very interesting, and uh, we will meet again next week. And a happy holidays to those who celebrate them. And Happy non-holidays who find these holidays objectionable and, and do not celebrate them like me. <laughs> um, <laughs> so uh, thank you, everybody. Bye -bye. Enjoy. Bye. Thank you. Bye. 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 -bye. <clears throat>